Holy Toledo, welcome to the loneliest show in all of the internet. Welcome to the celebration of all things lonely here in the Not Sam studio. Welcome to the one and only, the irreplaceable, the irrefutable, Sam Roberts. Now, yes, yes, and we're not, I mean, what are we applauding for? What are we applauding for? We're applauding because guess who's here with me? Hot dog. Hot dog is here. Oh, yeah. I'm jacked off. You're jacked off? Is that what you said? You're jacked off? No, I said I'm jacked up. Why you, uh, why, what's got you all jacked up? I got a sugar rush. I got sour skittles. I got nine liters. I got cream soda, and I got you, Sam. Ah, the sweetest treat of all, <laughs> Sam Roberts. Well, I'm glad that you're all jacked up. You know, we're living in a time where it's very fragile to be a host. Just earlier this week, uh, both Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon were casualties of the of the media war. We did a video that was this week. I know. That's why I was like, look, I got to do a video now. Because I was oh like, that was Monday. I said, by Friday, can you imagine? That's why. And if you want to see what I thought of all that, you can go and, and, and see that videos here on the channel. But can you imagine if I came on here tonight and I was like, so we're going to talk about, can you believe they fired Don Lemon? You'd be like, what? I would have stopped you. Like, Sam, that was three weeks ago, motherfucker. Sam, what are you doing? Nobody's talking about that anymore. Well, no. We're not here to talk about that tonight. However, we did, we weren't done losing legends, as it were, because this week, just a couple of days ago, we lost maybe the most legendary legend of all. We lost a man who, his very name, his face, his aura, it exudes everything that was the 90s. We lost Jerry Springer, only 79 years old. Jerry Springer died of pancreatic cancer. And I mean, look, I was lucky enough that we had Jerry Springer on the radio show a bunch of times. So, you know, I got to have a few conversations with the guy, kind of at least get the uh, the, the idea of what he was like as a human being. But I, it, none of that. And, and this is probably something that followed him from the time he did this show up until he died. Like, nobody's really interested. And no, I don't think anybody really was interested in the real Jerry Springer. What, what's the real guy like? Everybody just wants to know about the show. They just want, and this was it, right? This is the perfect picture of the show. Chaos is just going nuts. The audience is all, you know, co-eds from college that are here on their spring break looking at the carnage in front of them. Some guy over there with a shirt he bought at Kohl's just for the TV taping is watching. There's a fight going on. Security's trying to break it up. And Jerry's just over in the corner going, eh, whatever, I don't know. Jerry had this like amazing vibe where it's the only time I've seen a guy who has a show named after him. It's literally called the Jerry Springer Show. But his vibe was always like, this ain't my show, bro. The same. The same. This is between you guys. Wow. I don't know what you guys had planned today. I don't know what. This is not my show. This is crazy. This is nuts. You guys are weird. I don't know. Is anybody even watching this? They just paid me to hold these cards. I don't know what any of this is. And it's kind it was, of. It was, it was the most low key shit stir. I mean, and uh, I see uh, here. Uh, Destiny, he's the father of your baby, but your brother? There you go. <laughs> uh, now, I see here um, Tornado. Your name's Tornado? Mm-hmm. Tornado. Uh, it says here that you're pregnant, but your husband has no genitals. How did that happen? Because both <laughs> men are here. Both men are here. Welcome. Let's Woo! welcome them both to the stage. Ooh. Yes, and why is there a horse there? I probably shouldn't ask. Yeah, it's it's just like, and and that was he was the conscious conscience of his own show. He allowed you the fact that he kind of removed himself from it, and just allowed the sort of carnage and exploitation and pure id of the United States of America to just unfold in front of you made it so that we could watch it. You know what I mean? Because we're Jerry. 
we're all watching this thinking that we are Jerry. None of us are watching the show thinking, oh yeah, I'm just like the guy who had an affair with his cousin. We're going, no, 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 no. I'm like Jerry. I'm just watching y'all. I'm not, I'm not he here. He's a straight man on his own show. Right. I'm not here being a part of it. He's the, he's the guy. He's the compass. He's due north. He's like, no, 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 no. We're, we're here. If Jerry's okay with this, I'm sure it's okay that we're all watching too. Because that's really what it was. I mean, you know, the, the id, the ego, the super ego. This is the id. It was just like, what if we just gave in to the id that nobody really wants to admit's there, but is there for everybody? Let's just see what would happen if we spilled it out on television. And you know what happened? He beat Oprah. He beat Oprah. We don't even like to admit this about ourselves. People don't talk about that. You know why? Because in America, we like to pretend that we're all Oprah, but we're not. Hmm? We're Springer. That's what we are. Oprah's over here doing a book club, and we're all like, yep, this book club is the most successful talk show of all time. Uh -uh. You go back to the 90s and you tell me what was going on, because people turned off the book club and started watching women in very short skirts fight, fist fighting with each other. And this was daytime, okay? That's what people don't yeah. understand. You know what time they You didn't get no free cars. Mm -mm. That's, what, that's what, you know, Oprah had to give away free cars and get Tom Cruise to just blow up his career, jump up and down on the couch to finally get the spotlight back. Because Jerry Springer was like, hey, you know that stuff they do on TV at like one o'clock in the morning? What if we did it at like 11 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> they were like, yeah, let's do that. For all the stay-at-home moms. But he, oh, yeah, that's it. I mean, there was nothing better, dude. You don't even know what this feeling was like, hot dog, because, you know, you're, 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 you, you weren't around for it. But dude, I know what you're going to say, and I do know what that feeling was like. Staying, of course I went through it. Staying home. Staying from, home, being sick, uh -huh. watching, watching I, Springer and Maury I, and all those shows. I guess course, I forgot. I how, Springer was on for a long time, wasn't he? Yeah. You would do, it felt good because you were like, not only am I not at school, but I'm not, I should not be watching this. This is <laughs> this is far too mature for me. I mean, Springer was so huge. I don't even know if you knew that. I think we've talked about it on the show before because I'm kind of obsessed with it. He's they made a movie about his show where he played a character that was just basically him. Except I guess they maybe they didn't want to buy the rights to the Springer show or maybe some other like TV network owned it or something like that. I don't know because his name wasn't Jerry Springer in the movie, but he was a talk show host that had like white trash on to fight with each other on the stage in front of an audience. It was just Jerry Springer. It's one of the most hideous movies you could ever watch. It's called Ringmaster, but it's like, the Springer show just got so big that they were going, how do we make more money off this? Like, is there any way to put this in a movie theater? And they were like, well, what if we just, what if we just did a show except it's a movie? And they're like, yeah, okay, fine. Sounds good. So like in the movie, you follow characters. Like, you know, uh, do you know Jamie Presley, the actress? She was in uh, My Name is Earl. She was in Joe oh. Dirt, you know. Jamie Presley. She, Jamie Presley was in it, I remember. And in this uh, vaguely, yeah, right. She was, she was, she had a moment, but in this movie, she's like having sex with her stepfather or something like that. In this movie, I don't know her character, her character. Right. You had my curiosity. Now you got my attention. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so they basically follow the people that are going to be the guests on the show. And they show them at home. Like they show, you know, it's a comedy. <laughs> and they show- I might have seen this on like Comedy Central or some bullshit. Like yeah. That. Like they show you like, oh, these people are such, it's just another excuse to like laugh at people who can't get their shit together and have no money. You know, and they were just like, what if we made a movie about that? And everybody was like, that sounds like a great idea. Of course we should do that. Can we get Jerry Springer to star? And he's still, even in the movie, is just got that vibe where he's like, I don't know, I don't really want to be here. I don't know who's- Thing this is like he's very good at not taking responsibility because you know he started just, as a politician and you know what got him busted you know the story right i don't know that he got busted for he anything. got canceled he's one of the original canceled people the reason he had to go into entertainment like he was seriously into politics he wanted to be the president he wanted to like he had dreams his dream was to be a politician and it got taken from him 
because he got caught with a prostitute. Oh. And he was paying her with a check. Well, that's kind of a doofus move. <laughs> yeah. There was a very clear paper trail. He was paying her with a check, so he had to pay it up. And he's like, okay, whatever. He's trying to figure it out. He gets into this talk show racket. But in the beginning, he's kind of trying to be like Donahue. He's being a very low-key, very news-oriented. Like the first season or two of Springer is just some of the most boring TV ever. And he was failing. And I guess one show, whatever, popped because they got into a big argument or they got into a fight or whatever. And then boom, they're like, let's just do that for every single show to the point where, do you remember these? He went through the VHS and DVDs uh, before, I believe it was before Girls Gone Wild. There was Jerry Springer too hot for TV. What was on that? This one uh, you'll see here is called I Refuse to Wear Clothes was the name of the show. That was the title of the show. And it's amazingly, you know, when you go to a nudist colony, you 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 have uh, just some of the people who physically would be traditionally described as unattractive, right? Like not the, not the most beautiful people in the world for whatever reason. That's kind of the stereotype. Sure. Of a nudist colony. Or when you go to a nude beach, it's always kind of like overweight old people and stuff like that. But in this episode of I Refuse to Wear Clothes, Jerry found uh, the most beautiful, I would say stripper-like <laughs> women that refused to wear clothes. So what this uh, Too Hot for TV VHS would be, uh, would it would be the Springer show. And they would, these women would just be completely nude doing this interview about why they don't like to wear clothes, but there would be no blurs on it. You could just see all the parts. And so you would, you would order this off TV. I mean, can you imagine that now when we have all these tube sites and you can just go and get, get free adult content whenever you want it back then you would have a 1-800 number that you would call, give them your credit card, pay shipping accidentally subscribe to a subscription service. So they're sending you a new Jerry Springer tape every two months just because you saw a commercial that got you so worked up. You go, I got to know what's going on behind those blur lines. What would he even interview them about? Just why do you, why don't you put some clothes on? Why don't you put some clothes on? You know, Jerry, <laughs> I just feel free like this. Oh, you feel free like this, huh? Yeah, I really do feel free like this. You know, it must well, be uh, tough for you to get a job. Is it tough for you to get a job? <laughs> you know, and it's just... Well, why don't we bring in more naked women? Right, that's Come right. On, bring then, them out. Right, so there's the second one. And your friend does this same thing. She goes, yep, let's bring her out. Let's bring out your friend. <laughs> so it would be all like the naked Jerry Springer shows and also the extremely violent shows because that's what would happen. Like at one point, it became, in the 90s, it was uh, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, yeah. But it was Marilyn Manson, violent video games, and Jerry Springer was responsible for the downfall of society. Somehow, society just continues to fall down. And generation after generation, you just find whatever excuses you can find. And nobody's kind of looking for that thing that's tying it all. Like, why would this continue to happen? Oh, it changes for generation. It's the exact same symptom. But the cause changes every generation. Okay. But so they got to a point where they, they, didn't, they couldn't show the fights on TV anymore. They said that uh, uh, that the, the 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 it was too violent. It was too harmful. Yeah, what the, the FCC step the, in mm -hmm. and all the ah. networks, the advertisers. So they literally would put a big like Springer censored logo over the fights, and that's what that honestly was what made it so it wasn't the biggest thing in America anymore. It was you know not that the show ever really had a downfall because it lasted forever, but what took it out of its spot of being kind of a, a cultural entertainment leader was that they couldn't show the fights anymore. And once they shop, stopped showing the fights, and I think I think they were allowed to start showing the fights again when they kind of admitted that, you know, some of the reality might've been assisted. Assisted reality. Assisted yeah. reality. That's like when Springer came on the show and he was like, no, I'm doing Judge Jerry now, but they're all real cases. And I'm like, I just saw Mike Boschetti on the show. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like half of the people that do our radio show are 
litigants on your court show. Like what a coincidence. Yeah, that's weird. I had no idea that Sandy Kane and Mike Boschetti and Dave Juska. I had no idea they all had legal problems. That's so weird. Um I, I would go to Judge Jerry for that. I would too. I would too. You know, there's an old clip. Uh the AEW ring announcer Justin Roberts was a contestant. Uh no, I guess a contestant. A participant on one of the Jerry Springer shows. He was like a guest who was pretending he was getting cheated on or something like that. Did he get in a fight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, what? <laughs> yeah, Come there are videos on. out there. The videos, he's posted it on his Instagram. I got to look that up. The videos out there. I mean, look at this. Look at this. By the way, I love that it says classic Springer because it is. This is a classic. Classic Springer. This is just the name of the show. So, like back in the day, it was even before you had like the guide channel. So, you would just go through the TV guide magazine and see what was on. And so that's when like all these episodes would have titles and that would be one of the things. So like in the TV guide, it would say like Wednesday, 11 a.m., Jerry Springer, I have a surprise, I'm cheating. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, that's that's the Funny. show. And, and by the way, a lot of these shows were post the Jenny Jones thing. You, know, you remember the Jenny Jones controversy that they had a- Jenny Jones, you don't know who Jenny Jones is? Never had a, never met him. Oh, we got to do, we got, I never met the, we, we got to do a, 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 a recap of, of the entire talk show scene of the 90s. Jenny Jones was also a, con that's where Rude Jude got started. Rude Jude would go on and, and he'd insult people on the Jenny Jones show. But Jenny Jones was like famous for having one of the hit talk shows. But she did a show where it was like, uh, like I think the show was Surprise I'm Gay, which I, you know, you're it's it's the '90s, right? So it's not, it's not friendly. And so they did the show, and a guy who like showed up, he was like, yeah, like we're best friends, but I have a crush on you, blah blah blah. And yeah, they went home, and like the guy got murdered by the other guy on the show. He murdered him. Wow. And like Jenny Jones got taken to court and everything. And it was like, whoa, maybe there's consequences to the things that we're doing on television. Maybe we shouldn't. Uh... Well, I bet you that wasn't assisted reality, though. That no, reality, that one was though. real, real. That one was. No. That's when Jerry was like, let's script these shows. Huh? What do you say? Let's script them. But yeah, that, Jerry didn't let that stop him. No, Jerry was like, no, we're still doing some wild ass shows. This is, I have a surprise on um, cheating. Well, they don't know well, about the Mike other. asked me to marry him. And I turned him down. Uh, and he asked me why, and I couldn't tell him at the time. I love this. So Mike's outside the studio. He's outside the studio, but he can't hear. So they're like, look at his look, look at his face. dumb face. We all know, <laughs> and this idiot doesn't. <laughs> like, why show him? <laughs> Was anyone pleasantly surprised? Hey, surprise! I'm cheating. Oh, great, fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing me on this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad. That you didn't do something stupid, like tell me in private. Well, this is so now you're going to tell them that tell there's somebody why. else. Well, yes. yes. Okay. Well, let's first. Okay, he's been outside the studio. He knows he's here to hear something about your relationship. So, and then uh, yeah. it's never good news. Something about the relationship. What? That it's going great. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, Shell Springer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, what is that even like logically? What? It, what how does that? How does that even make sense? Like the boyfriend and the girlfriend, just like the whole plane. Hey, you want, we're at home. You want to be on the Springer show to talk about our relationship. What about it? Eh, just about our relationship. No. Yeah. Okay. We're getting it. on the plane. We're on the airplane now. Hey, what were we going to talk about again? Uh, you know, just relationship stuff. Oh, okay. We're in the hotel now the night before. Oh, I just kind of get my mind together for the Springer show tomorrow. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> just, you know, whatever relationship. I don't know. Is it is it good or bad? Because uh, this uh, is the Jerry Springer show. Oh, come on. Good night. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, so he's ready for a surprise. He doesn't know what it is, but we'll find out. It's a surprise. Okay, here he is, your boy don't worry. It's a oh, surprise. Mike. Get in there, doofus. Everybody's cheering. Oh, they're cheering for me. This must be great. Probably good news. Uh, big hug, big kiss. Last hug. That's a last hug. Uh, Maybe he thinks she's pregnant. Maybe it's a pleasant surprise. It's gonna... such a romantic show. Hey. Mike, welcome to the show. How long have you known Moon? Moon How long for six months. You've known Moon for six yeah. months. And describe your relationship. Well, we've been uh, 
dating for about six months too. Um, okay, let's see if I can. Let's let's see. Oh, because he'll milk it. Oh, that looks like he found out. <laughs> you know, you know the reason why I just don't want a relationship with just one person right now, and I've also been dating somebody else. You've been dating somebody else? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and you're just sitting there with your popcorn going like, oh, yeah, his life's over. His life's over. So, Wait, what's, so Jenny, what's Jenny doing today? What's Ricky Lake doing today? Just flipping through the commercials. Uh, I love it. You know, Jerry was one of the only guys he did, and he loved being on television. He was on The Masked Singer. He was on Dancing with the Stars. He was on everything. The guy just loved to entertain. But he so. kind of put like a little... A highbrow twist into like this lowbrow trashy. Because he was like, I'm not owning any of this. Your name's on the show. I don't know. Somebody put it there. I don't know. I don't know anything like about it. Like the Springer it. show is it's trashy. But when you think of Jerry Springer. No. Well, but you, but you trashy. But what if I told you Jerry Springer type stuff? Trashy. But what if I tell you Jerry Springer? Not trashy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Good right. guy. That's right. Like... If I made a list of all the stuff and all the, if I made a list of people who were like Jerry Springer type people, Jerry Springer would not be on the list. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. he's like, I don't know, man. I don't do any of that weirdness. Who are I you again? Like, I'm, uh, I'm actually. Stern, Opie, Anthony. Yeah, uh, no, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Think of anyone else. No. Yeah, I'm making a list of Jerry Springer type people, and it's, this is what's your name again? A uh, Jerry Springer. I. It's my. <laughs> yeah, no. No, it's just I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I don't know. That's that's talent right there. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Well, Jerry, you sidestepped for 30 years and you did an amazing job. Rest in peace to a legend. Jerry Springer. To Jerry Springer. I love that. Now don't forget to uh I see people uh, uh chiming in. Somebody shouted out Ricky Lake. So much going on. I see people talking about stuff we're not even talking about. Super chat in, you know? Every awesome. every Every everything, every super chat gets acknowledged. That Jerry chant lives on forever, I think. And by the way, hot dog, you just interrupted me. If the, when the lights on, don't talk, okay? Oh, oh, oh. Look, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, uh, I gotta talk to you about this. Are you ready to forgive Ezra, Ezra Miller? It's already done. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I seen this trailer for the Flash. The Flash trailer came out uh, 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 this week, and I feel like whatever they paid Michael Keaton, he didn't realize how important he was to this movie. Like Michael Keaton deserves more than whatever. Like there's this radio station uh, called uh, I think uh, maybe maybe Blink. 107 blink 102 something like that maybe it was but i don't know it's some radio station here in new york and Kiefer sutherland came in as a guest to the show and they had him cut liners which is a regular thing you do on a radio show where it's just like hey it's Kiefer sutherland and you're listening to blink or whatever station it was and you know he just reads a list of quotes he just reads stuff off the paper and then he goes about his business right he was just a guest they took his liners and they re-imaged the whole channel with him because his voice is so good that he became the voice of the channel, but he didn't get any money. <laughs> like, he just, it was just supposed to be like, hey, what's up? I'm Hot Dog. You're listening to Sam Roberts now. But it would be like if I took what you said and just attached it to every show, the whole channel took, hey, I'm Hot Dog out of it and just, you're listening to Sam Roberts now. Like, I, instead of hiring a voiceover guy, I just used the stuff you did for free. And redid the whole channel. Hey, I mean, you gave him the audio. audio was theirs. <laughs> I mean, he would charge for that exact thing a lot of money. Like, he would do that if you paid him for it. But they were like, well, we already have the recording. But the reason I bring that up is because I kind of feel like, and I don't know, I have no idea how much Michael Keaton got paid to be in this movie. But something tells me that they hit him with a key for Sutherland on the radio. Like something tells me that when he saw this trailer, he went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> like, I thought it was just a bit role. I thought it was a cameo. Like if this movie makes a hundred million dollars, which it probably will, Michael Keaton deserves $80 million. <laughs> like it's so, he's reviving Ezra Miller's career and he's making, how much, I'll put it this way. When you watch this trailer, right? The Flash, is going to be in theaters June 16th. 
I don't think anybody yeah. wants a solo Flash movie in general. He's not a superhero that people are like, nobody's ever said the Flash is my favorite superhero. It's never happened. Right. I mean, there were calls for Flash to be canceled because... Ezra Miller you know. is so problematic that people were willing to say goodbye to the character because of, because of every story you read about this guy. But this trailer comes out and and people are are saying, I can't wait to see this thing. I'm so glad this was made. Michael Keaton is in it a ton. I guess the premise of this movie is that the Flash, uh, his parents died or whatever, maybe his mom, I don't know. But he goes back in time to stop that from happening. It's basically Ashton Kutcher's The Butterfly Effect, except with superheroes. They go back so he can stop that from happening, but everything gets all messed up, and now everybody exists everywhere all at once. Like that movie that won all the awards. And so there's multiple Batmans in it. But if you watch the trailer, Michael Keaton is in half the trailer. Ben Affleck gets five seconds. Yeah, that, that was a cameo. Right, that should tell you like, oh, Michael Keaton, uh, Ben Affleck pops up. Michael Keaton plays Batman in this movie. That's why everybody's going to see it. They said they premiered this already. They screened it at CinemaCon. CinemaCon was in Las Vegas. And they screened the Flash. They screened the Flash. And not only were the reviews overwhelmingly positive, but people were so emotional about the movie, they were crying, leaving. There were people, cry if I told you you were going to cry leaving a movie about The Flash, you would say I was nuts. But what if I told you Michael Keaton was wearing a Batman suit in it? You would probably start crying right there because Michael Keaton is back as Batman. That's what the name of the movie should be. The Flash, Michael Keaton is back as Batman. <laughs> the subtitle would be that? That's yes. That's yes. in your face subtitle, I think. Right. The Flash 2 Michael Keaton is back as Batman. You're like, this is the first <laughs> Flash movie. Who cares? Nobody's paying attention to the top part. Look at this thing. Look at this. I mean, it's it's Wayne Manor. The first shot is Wayne Manor. Okay? The first shot of the trailer is Wayne Manor. He's looking. That's Bruce Wayne's parents. It's not the Flash's parents. It's Bruce Wayne's parents. It's the Batcave. It's Tim Burton's Batcave. Tim Did Burton. you the wrong trailer? No. You think I'm playing Tim Burton's Batman? Tim Burton deserves some money, too, by the way. Look at this. They're showing all the Batman suits, except guess what? They're all Michael Keaton Batman suits. All of them. Where's Ben Affleck's suit in there? There ain't one. It's all Michael Keaton's Batman. You don't even have emo Batman in there. Twilight is somewhere watching this trailer going, what, I don't have a phone? You couldn't put emo Batman in this thing? No, this is Michael Keaton is back as Batman. I'm Batman. Do the line. Wanna get nuts? I'll get you, I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> you actually Look at that! It's him! It's him! This is what the trailer's all about. If Tim Burton's not getting a cut of this, he should sue. He should file a lawsuit if Tim Burton is not getting this money. It's called a repurpose, Sam. Yeah, well. Tim Burton is the one that gave it purpose. Give that man some cash. They're in there saying, where's Christian Bale? Doesn't matter. It's all about Michael Keaton. I hope they do a ton of like merchandising promotions with this. Because like Batman was the first superhero movie that was just merchandised out the wazoo. 1989, 1980, I think it was 1989. Everywhere you went, it was the black and gold Batman logo. This shit was at McDonald's. It was on Coca-Cola. It was everywhere. Batman was the movie. Michael Keaton's Batman was the movie that literally revolutionized home video. Okay, Batman, you know, before, back in the day, VHS movies would cost like $100 because the idea was the only people that would buy these movies on VHS would be video rental places. So you go and you pay five bucks to a video rental place, but nobody owned VHS movies unless you were super rich. Batman was the first movie to come out that was like 10 bucks, 15 bucks for the VHS. And it sold, everybody had it, dude, everybody. And now they're bringing all that back. And like, I guess Ezra Miller is there too.
That's what this trailer is. The Flash. I guess Ezra Miller is there too, <laughs> but Michael Keaton is back as Batman. That's the that's name a better, of this movie. That, that's yes. A better ring to it. Yes. Yeah. The Flash. I guess Ezra Miller is here too, but Michael Keaton is back as Batman. That's the name of the movie. Look at him. I didn't even see The Flash. It doesn't it even. Top billing. I haven't seen one lightning bolt. I've seen bats. Now one lightning bolt, and we're 34 seconds in. That's a lifetime for a movie trailer. There he is. Oh, I guess Ezra Miller gets to hang out with Batman? No, that's oh. The Flash. Oh, all right, whatever. Guess he's in this too. <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh, he's in this? Was this Batman meets The Flash? B. Herb said, Bob, good old Bob. I hope Bob's in this movie because Bob, you are my number one guy. Remember when I gave you that speech, hot dog? That was from Batman. That was Jack Nicholson as the Joker. If you're a real one, because I don't even think you've actually seen the Michael Keaton Batman hot I don't dog. Think, I didn't get that reference. No, of course you didn't, because you've never actually seen the movie. You just like hype. You just no. you just enjoy hype. Like you're just excited for a thing that people are excited about. I've seen clips on YouTube. But that's that Jack. You gotta watch 1989 Batman. It's the best. It's the best. But that's with the Joker. Just, it's just grabbing Bob by his shoulders because Bob is the Joker's right-hand man. He's Bob. They made an action figure of Bob. I had a Bob action figure when I was growing up as a kid. It was the best. A bobblehead? That's, I, like, I like what you... Thank you. No, he had a switch on the back of his jacket and he kicked. Oh. And, he, and you could take his hat off and you could see he was horseshoe bald up top. <laughs> <laughs> Prince did the soundtrack. Prince. Oh, Prince. You didn't know. You've never seen. Why are you acting like you're excited about Michael Keaton playing Batman? If you didn't even know Prince did the. Oh, he did the whole Batman soundtrack. Because I, you've I never seen the movie. Because I can acknowledge when something is is, is like a, a, a legendary thing. I've seen clips. I, I, I know the hype. I understand it. I just, he literally I'm, did I'm, a song yeah. called Bat Dance. I didn't know that. Batman. It was great. I wasn't there for Hulkamania, but I acknowledge the greatness of it. You should be acknowledging your tribal chief, so you should be acknowledging. <laughs> my apologies, my apologies. This town needs an enema. Nothing? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> but you're excited about this for Michael Keaton. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> you are such, you are the biggest poser in the world. I'll watch it. <laughs> watch, watch Batman 1989. I, I am going to watch that, yes. We should probably do a watch-along together on the show, now that I know that I'd be down. Have... I'd be down. Yeah, it'd be a lot better than Cats, that's for sure. Oh, I got COVID already, thinking about it. <laughs> you thought you had COVID? you just seen Cats? <laughs> Watching Popeyes, <laughs> I think I'm sick, dude. Okay, it's like skip, 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 flash, flash, skip, flash, skip, skip, skip. There it is. <laughs> and he's got, like a, he's got like a cane. And he's like, you want to get nuts? Come on! And he smashes something. He goes, ah, let's get nuts. <laughs> You're just like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, Mr. Mom. Calm down there, Michael Keaton. It's becoming a thing now. Uh, I don't know if you watched Spider-Man, but uh, they had a Green Goblin use the, uh, that line from like the first Spider-Man movie where he's, where he's like, you know, Peter, I'm kind of a scientist myself. And everybody's and like, like yeah, yeah. woo! Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, he said the line. He lines. said the line. He did it twice in this trailer. I'm Batman, and you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Like, he did it twice in the trailer. In the she pops. And they work. Because I yeah. saw this trailer, I was like, I am definitely going to watch Michael Keaton's The Batman with Flash. And we're getting nuts. I'm going to sit there, though. I'm going to be pretty frustrated that there's not a ton of Batman. Like, if this, is, if this movie that they're calling The Flash is very Flash-heavy, I'm going to be annoyed. Because I'm going to want to know what's going on with Michael Keaton Batman. It does seem like a marketing ploy. Like they're using bait and all, switch. You think bait and switch? They're using all of their footage on this. Ooh, trailer. that would bother me. That would bother me. They're pulling out Ana de Armas. I'll sue. I will sue. <laughs> you want to go class action with me? Let's go class action. You want to get class action? Let's get class action. <laughs> Look, but I hope Ezra Miller sends. Uh, Michael Keaton and edible arrangements or something just to be like, thanks, dude. I appreciate the solid on this. Everybody's talking about how great the movie looks. 
nobody's remembering that I was like living on a farm or something with somebody else's kids. <laughs> like they probably weird. won't even send them for a press run. They'll probably just send Keaton out. Just send Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. Did we sign up to do all the press for the movie? <laughs> yeah, it was a bad deal, Michael. It was a bad. It was a bad deal. You're literally, you're you're entitled to. I mean, I would. I don't. Know, based on this trailer, minutes of this. Based on the trailer, Michael Keaton is entitled to ninety six percent of the gross of this film. You don't think he got a good deal out of this, even though there's no way he got ninety six percent of the gross of this <laughs> movie, and that's a crime, as far as I'm concerned. He needs a new agent because this should be the highest payday that michael keaton's ever gotten like they should just give yeah, him at least in a long time a long time like this is bigger than birdman this is <laughs> everything <laughs> fly in any weather batman <laughs> well i'll tell you so not only did this catch my attention but hot dog did you see this clip going around the internet this week who the fuck are those <laughs> well this clip who the fuck are those? Okay, you asked. You asked who the fuck are those because I have a whole separate cheat sheet to answer that question. That is a that is I'm a glad you asked. That is a big question that you just asked, hot dog. Who the fuck are those? Well, <laughs> hot dog. Dateline NBC this week uh, attempted to answer that very question, and this clip went everywhere i'm gonna play this clip that went everywhere first because i think this is this your question you this is why i have you here hot dog you speak for the nation that that is the question so many had when this clip aired and this is uh it's clips like this that'll save twitter to tell you the truth this clip going everywhere on twitter made me go maybe this is a pretty good app <laughs> this is it's good for content we were once a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. And we'd like privacy, and I would like <laughs> to go back to being a normal husband. But I'm, I can't, because I can't breathe. I can't walk. Uh, people say, that's an act. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. <laughs> exactly. What is going on? Are you buying that hot dog? Are you buying that he can't walk and that he can't breathe and that he wants privacy? I'm not buying any of this. You're not buying I'm any of it. very confused right now. All right, hot dog. Well, let me try to answer some of these questions, okay? That is Arthur Knight, okay? Arthur Knight is a uh, professed, self-professed, I should say, orphan from Ireland, that's an Irish accent that he's got. I don't know if you heard it. It's uh, Irish. Uh, uh, he lives in Scotland now. But he's an Irish orphan. That's why that accent is clearly a very, very real, organic Irish accent. Hmm. He lives in Scotland with his wife, whose name he took... Uh, uh, Miranda Knight. He was Nicholas Brown. He married Miranda Knight. That's Miranda Knight right there. I would have taken the, the Knight last name as well. And they've been uh, they've been peacefully living in Scotland. Now the problem is that accusations have started to come in that Arthur Knight here, who. I think he's got long COVID. That's what they say. That's why he went in for with 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 COVID nineteen into the hospital, and he's had an oxygen mask on ever since. It's just ravaged. Wait, him. that past video was a video about COVID? No, it was about Arthur Knight, because Arthur Knight here is. There are people saying hot dog, and by people I mean courts that are saying that while he may tell you that he is a uh, Irish born orphan, Arthur Knight, that he is actually Nicholas Oliverdian who was born or, or who is also known as Nicholas Rossi. Secret identity, a now, double identity. However, that seems impossible because 
Nicholas Oliverdian, Oliverdian, I'm not Olivandri, Oliverdian. Nicholas Oliverdian died in 2020 and had an obituary written for him in uh, the Rhode Island newspaper. So here's what happened. <clears throat> okay. You asked who the fuck these people were, right? Yes, I did. Who the fuck are those? Wow. Nick <laughs> so Nicholas Oliverdian was a dude living in Rhode Island, right? This guy right here. Young guy. And he was an advocate for DCYF, the Department of Children, Youth, and Families. He was an advocate for... Uh, 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 the uh, child welfare and uh, taking care of, of orphans and making sure that there wasn't abuse uh, from the state. He said that he was an orphan in America. Now, don't get confused. He was an American orphan. This is an Irish orphan named Arthur Knight. This is an American orphan named Nicholas Oliverdian. Okay. I'm not buying that these are the two same people. I mean, I'm not buying that. What about this picture? Oh, that's probably too far into it. Yeah. So, uh, I know it looked like it was something from the sex offender registry. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me let me continue. Uh, uh, he was an advocate in Rhode Island for DCYF, and he said he was abused by the state as a boy. Um, at one point, in 2020, he left Rhode Island. This is 2008. This here is 2008. Okay. Okay. So this is current day. This is 2008. So you, I'm not saying that he put on a bunch of weight. You, this is current day. This just aired six days ago. And this is 2008. Okay. So okay. he would have put on a, a weight, but that's very right. that's very easy to do. Now, okay. Nicholas Oliverdian was also Nicholas Rossi. He was definitely known as Nicholas Rossi. Nicholas Rossi, when he was eight, was, an, was a legit orphan. And when he was eight years old, he moved, he was adopted by an Engelbert Humperdinck impersonator. There in that? Engel, Engelbert, <laughs> <laughs> Engelbert Humperdinck is a recording artist. And a man who impersonated him adopted this eight-year-old, but he was a problem eight-year-old. So by the time he was 13, he was put into foster care. Kind of now, a problematic eight-year-old asshole can you be? Well, eight to 13, the whole time. Um, he, had, he had claimed abuse as a kid. But the, the guy, the, the, one, one of the people said that the judge declared determined that a lot of the abuse, like a lot of the markings on him were actually self-inflicted is what one of the news reports said. So there's a lot of problems going on. Um, he left Rhode Island in 2008, Nicholas Rossi. And uh, actually, is same, see, same guy. That's confirmed. It says right here. Okay. Aliases, Nicholas Oliverdian. This is from the sex offender registry. So he was Rossi first, then Oliverian. Is that is that the yes. timeline? Yes, yes. Okay. Oliverian, I don't think is a real name. It's just a thing he called himself Sounds because like his stepfather, because his stepfather, his 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 father, his adopted stepfather, whatever. The Engelbert Humperdinck impersonator's last name is Rossi, so that's where the Rossi name comes from. I don't know where Oliverian comes from, but he did sex crimes. He assaulted what one he was found guilty of assaulting this woman. And uh, he gets put placed on the sex offenders registry. Uh, now, he doesn't tell anybody about this in Rhode Island, but he keeps in touch with people because in Rhode Island, they know him as Oliverian, right? And it's state by state. So it's not getting out there. And it's still like, you know, whatever, 2009, 2010, right? It's not social media is not popping off like it was and everything. Um right. So he ends up uh, fleeing, right? He kind of disappears. He starts calling people back in Rhode Island, like in 2019. 
and he tells him he's in Russia. He tells him he's in Europe. He tells him he's in Ireland. He tells him he's in all these different places. But don't worry about it. Everything's fine. And he says all the legal trouble is is a misunderstanding. Because this sex offenders registry wasn't the only thing, right? Before he started calling people saying, I'm way, I'm out of the country, don't even worry about me. People who knew him in Rhode Island were getting calls uh, from several different states, Utah being one of them, uh, because his name was tracked to several different sex assault based crimes. In 2019, I believe, uh, the investigation restarted because a lawmaker took power over there and started going through evidence that had not been touched of, of women who had come in and said, this happened to me. And the evidence hadn't been touched, like the protocols hadn't been gone through. So they went and they tested all this old evidence. And they were, they were like, did you get any hits on it? And they were like, yeah, we got hits. It hit him. His <laughs> DNA was on the sex offenders registry. Like, yeah, they were like, it's him. So that's around the same time that he decides to leave the country. Now, he calls people back at home and he says, uh, uh, look, uh, I, uh, uh, I got uh, terminal cancer. I'm dying. They're like, really? He's like, yep, it's lymphoma. He says, I got Hopkins lymphoma, whatever it is. I got lymphoma and I'm dying. I'm gonna be dead soon and I'm dying. And they go, ah, oh, it's too bad. And when they're talking now, like they were interviewing a bunch of the people for this dateline, they were like, we don't believe him. <laughs> we don't, that's not true. I don't think that's true at all. They didn't believe him as he was making no, those calls? No, when he was saying, <laughs> no, I'm dying. Like the people that were closest to him were all like, no, 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 no. We didn't believe him at all. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, they did receive word of his death that he had died. He had died of cancer. His, uh, wife or the woman who claimed to be his wife because he also across the multiple states that he was in he had taken on multiple wives right so he's accused by all these people of not only sex-based crimes but also financial crimes uh, emotional abuse one of his wives said he locked her in a closet and like kept her in there and all this stuff like just all this crazy stuff he's just lying to everybody the wives didn't know about each other just all this stuff and he so a hinge date. This guy is having. This guy has wives all across the world, the country. It's like he's living in 1978. I don't know how he's pulling this off in the modern era, except Alrighty. except that he lies, changes his physical appearance and his name, which again is a little bit fishy for our friend Arthur Knight over here <laughs> in Europe. It follows a pattern. So uh, uh, they 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 get word that he's dead. Uh, his wife sends in the obituary and it runs in the Rhode Island newspaper. Why wouldn't it? It says his last words were fear not and run toward the bliss of the sun. And oh, they, fuck you. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. That was his that's last. nobody's last words. <laughs> no one's last words are that fucking deep. <laughs> One guy in a bar who knew him said, no, I think he wrote his own obituary. I think he, yeah, that's what he said. Fear not and run toward the bliss of the sun. And if you want to know where I got that quote from, I read his obituary. You can look it up. It's still in the Rhode Island newspaper that it was in. Um, okay, how profound you are. That's, no, that's not your last words. His death announcement was made by his wife, but his wife reached out to some of the people that he had worked with in this era of his life. 2009. In Rhode Island. And asked that they like declare it through the state. Like Rhode Island as a state honor his death. And they did. And they said, sure. talked about how they lost a great man and everything. And Utah, yeah, they? well, that was Rhode Island. Utah was like, what are you guys doing? What on earth are you doing? The, 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 the FBI and the investigations that were going on outside of Rhode Island were so not convinced that he was dead that they found out that there were two different memorial services that were planned for him. And they asked one of the places to cancel one of them to make sure there was only one memorial service because they thought he was such an egomaniac that he would show up to his own funeral. What? He didn't because they were like, he's okay. definitely not dead. And they were like, well, what about, you might ask what about the body, right? Well, after words as beautiful as that, his last words, uh, he was cremated and his ashes, his ashes were scattered at sea. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, so they're in the ocean. You would never find them. They're with Osama bin Laden. You'd never find them. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? You'd never find that body. Uh, now, conveniently, you might go back. You go, okay, well, how does this tie in with Nicholas... Uh, Nicholas Brown, who became... Yeah, we're, we're, by the way, you might say, I said Nicholas Brown was his name before he got married and he took his wife's last name and he became Arthur Knight. Oh. So he took a new first name as well when he got yeah, married. Yeah, I noticed that. Yes, he did. Yes, he, got, he took a new first name. They got married seven days before the untimely passing of Nicholas Aliverdian. So one week before Nicholas Aliverdian passed away, uh, these two... Uh, got married. What does that have to? What does that have to do with the other guy, though? These are two separate guys, obviously. Two separate guys, obviously. Yes. Um, he went to the hospital to be treated for COVID uh, while he was in Scotland, and uh, I guess he he went into a coma or something. And while he was in a coma, I, there were suspicions, and they were like, uh, "Why don't we go ahead and uh, grab a little of this here DNA?" Let's see what those, let's, let's see a little of that DNA. And as it turns out, and this is a crazy coincidence, it matches this guy. Hmm. It matches this guy who's the same as this guy. So they're saying it's actually this guy. Well, what a coincidence. And so then they brought, they arrested him in the Scotland hospital, right? So, and they said, and they said they haven't, so, so He's got tattoos as well. This guy's got tattoos. They said that he had markings on his body that matched the tattoos, meaning that it looked like he had them removed. But he had the same tattoos. Um, but what made them want to? What made them suspicious in the hospital in the first place? I, well, they were they were country. They were in, the FBI was investigating. Uh -huh. Like they were like, we think he's living a secret life in in Scotland. We think we've got him, pretending to be a <laughs> fat Irishman with a mask on. Oh, um, he's not pretending to be the first part. Fat. Fat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One out of three ain't bad. Yeah. Yeah. He was even, as he's doing the interview with Dateline, she's like, well, will you take the oxygen mask off? Because he's doing interviews now, but only with the oxygen mask on. And he goes, yeah, I will take it off, but I can't take it off now. She's like, no, I'm just asking if you'll take it off. And he goes, no, I told you, 100%, I'm going to take the mask off for you. I just can't do it right now because of my breathing. And then the voiceover comes over and goes, he never took the mask off. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and she goes, uh, she goes, but there are voices that are saying that you're the same person. And he goes, what voices? I don't know. What voices? I don't know. What? I don't know. No. I was my entire life here. So he gets arrested uh, in Scotland, you know, and they fingerprint him. And uh, the courts had declared in Scotland that he is definitely Nicholas Alverdian because uh, when they did the fingerprints, I don't know. I don't know what the minimum amount of matches you have to get on fingerprints is, but for him, uh, do you know how many fingerprints matched of his fingerprints matched him? Maybe like half. Half of one, you think? 0.5? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 10 fingerprints matched. Oh, perfectly. 10. Yeah. Wow. That's perfect 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ten, 10 fingerprints matched. Um, so now with all that in mind, check this out. It's a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. And we'd like privacy, and I would like to go back to being a normal husband. By the way, I don't think they say privacy in Ireland. I think they say that in England. Well, I mean, I'm sure his uh, adopted father from Ireland. Ireland. Uh, he was an Englishman who moved there and gave him that accent to also, say privacy. Also, he says when he was an orphan in Ireland, he was abused as an orphan. Which is oh, what man. Nicholas Rossi said about being in America, oddly. He, he could have changed that up a little bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah. A new backstory. A lot of times you forget your backstory, though, so you want to change as few details as possible. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I can't, because I can't breathe. I can't walk. Uh, people... I love the way, I can't breathe. <laughs> he rolled me on. I can't, I can't walk. It's a British accent. It's not Irish. 
Also, for someone who can't breathe, he sure does talk a lot. He's an Irish orphan in Scotland. Why would his accent be British? He's not even catching his breath. Hot dogs, sometimes it's easier to breathe than others. <laughs> Is that Irish? Yes. Say that's not. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What more evidence do you need? <laughs> wow, this was a perfect By ride you just took me on right now. Are you watching you this differently now? I am. And uh, you brought it back. It's like, a, like you just took me through a movie. Am I the last professional broadcaster for a reason? Is, oh, wow, oh my God. And now you're watching this chick like we all need a wife like her. I mean, talk about a ride or die. This is. Where did she come from? She's She is Miranda Knight. She married him a week before he died when he was the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> but what's her deal? Has she known? Has he known of her? I'll uh, bet. I'll bet. Time? I'll bet she's the one who called and told his friends he was dead. One guy. Saying, one guy at the at the bar. I watched so many news stories about this guy. One guy. One of his old friends at the bar. They're interviewing him, and he, they're all like Rhode Island guys. So they all have those like New England accents. And the guy's like, "Yeah, I thought I knew him. I thought I'm gonna do a Brooklyn accent because I can't do a Massachusetts accent." But they were like, "He was like, yeah, I thought I knew him." I didn't. This lady who called and said he was, she was his wife said, we want you to speak at his memorial. He was really touched by what you wrote about him. And I said, I've never written about this guy in my life. <laughs> what do you mean? I wrote about him. And she read me this quote. I didn't write that quote. <laughs> I never even said that. <laughs> so he did not. It was like Derek a little bit there in that screenshot. I mean... Would it surprise you if D-Bag did this? <laughs> Honestly, would it surprise you if D-Bag had some weird stuff in other states that we never knew about that required him to go pretend he was dead and change his identity? And yeah, it, it, and, would, it and, would make you go. And just like this guy, overweight. And, <laughs> oh, that's and nice. no, I'm just saying, like, just you know, <laughs> that, and it's not, it's not a good thing or a bad thing, you know. Sure, sure, sure. And he would have to get a whole bunch of horrible tattoos lasered off. And yeah, yeah, which is what there, and it would make you go, ah, oh, uh, it would all clicks now. It would actually, yeah, yeah. Sometimes a story this complicated explains, right? Is, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that checks out. <laughs> exactly. What do you say to to someone who believes that that you are Nicholas Oliverian? I am not. I am not <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> I'm not Nicholas Adam. That's not me. It's not, you know, you know, his, his, he's lying on the level of Austin Powers when he gets unfrozen. One Swedish made penis and larger pump. It's not mine, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. I'm not Oliverian. I am not Nick or Nicholas Oliverian. I am not Andrea. I am not Nicholas Oliverian. By the way, it's a little thing, but you always want to watch out for people like this. People who unnecessarily repeat your name back to you in conversation are doing a trick to create familiarity. Never trust a person who repeats your name, Cheyenne, you know what I'm talking about, back to you. Oh, I felt it. <laughs> did you feel it just then when I did it? Uh, Shay, I, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. You don't like that, Shay? No, it's manipulative. Shay, you know, Shay's not wrong there. See what I'm seeing? See, oh. it's it's that, it's that you know, you're agreeing with it and you're you're actually making it, because you, you, when I hit you back with it, it makes the thing that I'm saying, it attributes it to you. And you feel like there's this new thing. That's a trick. A lot just of tugged on me right now. Yeah, a lot of sociopaths use that trick. That's what he just did when he said, I'm not him, Andrea. If he were crying for real, he wouldn't think to go like, oh, let me address this reporter who I just met by her first name. That's a trick people do. Do you believe me? I I no, I felt it. I watch this. Like ask it. me a question. Uh, it's by saying your name or not saying your name? No, just ask me a re or just a regular question as a human being. 
I mean, is it daytime or dark? I can't tell. How's it looking like outside? Cheyenne, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes it, I guess it depends on, on your perspective of when the sun goes down. Uh, Did you feel it? I don't like it. Yep. Watch it now. Watch it. Watch it. Don't let him get you. I'll give you all the tricks. Thank you. That you are Nicholas Oliverdian. I am not Andrea. See? I am not See? Nicholas Oliverdian. And I do not know how to make this clear. <laughs> what do you say to people who say these? I can't say it enough. I'm not him. Do you have any evidence of that fact? No, no. I just would like, I'm, I can't <laughs> keep saying it. They're crocodile tears. He's putting on a show. This is all an act. <laughs> Oh, Eco. Andrea, no, that's, that's a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to people who say you're fake right? That's a low blow, Andrea. Oh, Eco. Andrea, no. This guy's I love George Santos. Yeah. And the wife's a terrible actress, too. Oh, oh, no. You d you say no. That? Oh, no. No, he doesn't like to be called Cheyenne. He likes to be called Hot Dog. Why would you? No, don't call him shit. That's a low blow, Andrea. <laughs> oh, you made him cry. What would you do? What did you do? She literally <laughs> is like Sebastian Maniscalco. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> oh, you Andrea, oh, no. Oh. That's a low blow. Oh. That's a right low blow. We this is a mental illness. It's sociopathy is what it is. That's what Sick. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're like, well, a person wouldn't fake their own death and assume new identities and just abuse, manipulate and and violently assault people. Right. And just lie to everybody in their life. Nobody would do that. Right. A human being wouldn't do that. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur Knight. It's honestly, it's kind of gross just watching someone so blatantly lie on I, I i don't think i've seen this before yeah where he's just he's called he, dead to right and, and he's still. inviting he's like hey dateline you should come to scotland you could come to my house so i can lie to your face you should do that <laughs> and they're like okay we're gonna do it and he's like okay awesome perfect like if a reporter was coming to your house hot dog and being like you showed up for work at 10 a.m every day last week wouldn't at that point you'd be like no no <laughs> I'm telling you, I did. Yeah, I think I hot. Got there early. I think hot dog was late. Oh no! Oh, oh that's no. a low blow. <laughs> a low blow. By the way, is that's a low blow? Is that even Irish vernacular? That's American <laughs> vernacular, isn't it? Is that a you kicked me under the belt? Yeah, like have you ever heard somebody in the UK go, "Oh, that's a low blow." That's not a UK thing. <laughs> Very uncouth. It's unbecoming of you, Andrea. That's what they would say. That's what they would say. Ah. Oh. All right. Well, look. We didn't, I mean, this was such a busy show. We didn't even get to figure out who's to blame for the rice on Southwest Airlines. <laughs> we were going to get to the bottom of that tonight, but I don't think we have time, you know, because what we do have to do is, is get your contributions. You want to contribute to the show tonight. You want to be a part of it. You want to be acknowledged, as I think you deserve to be acknowledged. Super Chat in. Every Super Chat will get acknowledged here on Sam Roberts Now. So uh, if you want to contribute to the show, Super Chat in. Don't forget to hit like. Don't forget to hit subscribe. We have the we have the new video go up um, about Tucker and Don Lemon on Monday. Uh, we're always trying to hit the late-breaking stories. Uh, and don't forget, too, if you're a wrestling fan and you're looking forward to the SmackDown draft at 8 o'clock tonight... Uh, Not Sam Wrestling podcast is up on the Not Sam Wrestling channel uh, every week now. The whole podcast goes up every Tuesday. So you can go over there and check out the fantasy draft that I did uh, for this week. Um, let's go to Six Crow. Appreciate you, Six Crow, for the contribution. Always good uh, to hear you checking in because when you check in, you pay. Uh, <laughs> Manash, hello from South Africa. Sam, you could be our mascot you're like every race all in one. Thank you very much, uh, Manash. I, uh, I, you know, I'm Sammy Switzerland over here. I like to, I like to exist with all teams. You should have seen me. People don't know what to make of me. Every race all in one. Hot, planet. 
all the countries get together. Exactly. With your with your ethnicities combined. <laughs> I am. Everybody's putting their rings in. I was on the phone when we were in Los Angeles, cute little sweet boy hot dog. His mother still worries uh for him, like he's 15 years old. And mm -hmm. So she was worried about him while he was in Los Angeles. And she was worried that I wasn't taking care of him. And uh, I am not there to take care of him. He is 30. <laughs> He's 30, 31. 31. He is there to work. I will be giving him money at the end of the trip. That's if he dies... He's an independent he contractor. What can I tell you? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you know, was, we don't have anything in writing. But while Hot Dog's mom, at one point, Hot Dog was getting it so bad, we were in a car on the way to one of our destinations, and she started, she's talking to him, and he just puts it on speakerphone so I can hear her. And I started talking to Hot Dog's mom in Spanish and telling her to no, no preocupes, and that I informed her that hot dog would be my uh, responsibilidad esta semana, pero no la semana próxima. I started explaining to her that hot dog would be my responsibility this week, but not next week, but she doesn't need to worry about this week while he's in LA. And hot dog's mom, I just hear this voice on the other end of the phone when I'm done go, oh, 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 oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then you put uh, her at ease, Sam. You put her at ease. I bet you didn't hear from her once more the rest of the LA nope. trip. She, I heard about her when I went to Austin. You should have. She should have. She knew. She should have been worried. Now, not Sam's responsibility. And there was a serial killer, so she should have been worried. Uh, uh, let me ask you this: Who did more damage that weekend, the serial killer or you at the Joe Rogan Comedy Mothership? A serial killer didn't get kicked out from, or he, and he didn't murder that week either. No, he didn't do anything wrong that week. Did you? No, he was on good behavior. No, I, I got kicked out of the mothership, and I was being belligerent to, with the staff. I thought you got kicked out of the comedy mothership. I, I was well. Apparently, the story goes, uh, I was going in, and and you know how every comedy club nowadays, you got to give in your phone and you got to take your watch and all that stuff. And I had a couple shots. They stole. Many. They stole your watch. Well, because it's a smart watch, so they go like, "You got to put that in the little socket thing or whatever." Oh, in the bag. Yeah, I got put it in the bag, and I had a couple shots to many, and maybe I was tired and annoyed, and I start going, "Oh, look, everybody, <laughs> we're becoming a big world. You got to take off your watch and get your phone off." Oh, <laughs> and they, they were. They were annoyed, and by that point, they started looking out for us and trying to find any excuse to kick us out. And they threw you guys. But, they threw you out. You got thrown out of the comedy mothership. Don't they like take your picture and like now you're on record as a heckler? No, because I as soon as they said you got to get out, I was like, well, all right, go oh, fine. And I got up and you know I left. You were I didn't even get to see Wendy Cummings. I got kicked out during the open. I mean, she was probably great. Sure, yeah. You were there with D Bag. D bag and the entire bachelor group. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You're there with D bag. Is that why you didn't protest getting kicked out? Because he was going to stay? <laughs> well, I mean, there are other cool things to do in Austin. And other cool know? people, they, other cool people to see. I mean, we went to Soho House afterwards. That was fun. With Derek? No, Derek stayed and watched Whitney <laughs> Cummings. Were you I, I got up without any, you know, any problems, any issues. <laughs> I said, all right, no problem here. And I just got up and I left. And I said, I've been I've been kicked out of better comedy clothes than this. <laughs> <laughs> I love everybody in like the circle is talking about how this is the greatest club ever. And only one person that we like you're connected with people who perform there and you get kicked out. <laughs> well, I'm one for two because I've been to the mothership twice. You're only there for like four days. Yes, correct. <laughs> Sounds like that bachelor party sucked. Well, you know, it has its ups and downs. Uh, P-H-W-O-F-L, Sammy Brand Muffins. You seem to be speaking from experience regarding nudist colonies. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I would fit right in there with this body of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be on the Jerry Springer VHS tapes, that's for sure. Uh, B Herb 76. F. Mary Kill. Ooh, I love this. Jerry Springer, Morton Downey Jr., or Phil Donahue? Well, 
Do you know who all those people are? Who's Phil Donahue? Oh, come on, dude. Phil Donahue, you know what the best Phil Donahue clip is? He had Vince McMahon and Dave Meltzer on his show, the same show. Uh, I think I've seen that clip. Yeah, he's got like white hair. He's like uh, the original. I, okay, I, yeah, I, yeah, I just yeah, Googled okay. him, okay. And yeah. you know Morton Downey Jr.? I'm Googling up right now. He's Morton. like the he's like the first really controversial I know that guy, guy. in your face, that, that guy. Yes. So uh, I guess I'd probably kill Phil Donahue because even though he was the first to do it, that's kind of it. I'd F Morton Downey Jr. Because he's here for a good time, not a long time. It's more explosive. Yeah. In your face. And I'd marry Jerry Springer because at the end of the night, he'd remind me to take care of yourself and each other. Such and I think that that's the, yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Because Jerry Springer, it's like, we'd be able to have like a really normal life. But when some weird shit happened at the gas station, we both stop and watch it all play out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like neither one of us would leave. So that'd be good. Uh, Six Crow says, the Flash is my second favorite superhero, <laughs> which is ironic because he's stuck in his apartment. <laughs> he's disabled. Uh, first goes to Steve. <laughs> first goes to Stephen Amell, Green Arrow. Thanks for playing the trailer. And then he says, Top Gun, at least in Canada, was the first cheap home video in 1986. I don't know. Maybe. Could be. Could be. Sam Banks, $1.99 for the boys. $1.50 for Sam, 49 cent for hot dog. Hot dog, I owe you a Coke. Mm, 50 cents. 49 cent. 49. This big? 49 cent. Uh, you get half a McDonald's Coke for 49 cents. Oh, nice. Matthew Nugent. Hey, Sam. Love you, dude. Doing great work. Shout out your boy in Ohio. I will not be shouting out that name, but I acknowledge your super chat. You son of a oh, bitch. No, I got it. Now I got to scroll up. <laughs> I was born at night, but not last night, baby. Uh, P-H-W-O-F-L. Stop poking holes, Sam. I may be in the story of, what's his name? Jeffrey Townsend. Thank you for the contribution. That's uh, very, very uh, helpful. Uh, and Capone, you see it? Jake, yeah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> not doing that. Capone 609 says, hot dog, let me hear that. Chocolate rain. Hit him with it, hot dog, with a thing that made you famous on the internet. Chocolate rain. That's it. Bro, you look just like him, and it's the worst impression I've ever heard. <clears throat> like, it doesn't Chocolate sound... Chocolate rain. It doesn't sound like him at all. How does he sound again? Why don't you do it? No, I'm not going to do it. You almost had me. You <laughs> almost had me. I was thinking about it, and I was like, no, dude. No, because you'll never respect me again. If I do. I got the breathing part, right? Yeah, no, I remember that part. I remember that part. All right, guys. I appreciate you all for hanging out tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You got five styluses. You might as well use them. Leave a comment. Hit like. Don't be stingy. I'm going to cheers with you later. Have a good one.